Hello, good morning, and welcome to Taco Tuesday for November 2021. Thank you so much for joining us today for another one of these great sessions. Uh, I'm excited today to be bringing uh, yet again four of our vendor partners to talk to you about some of the products and resources that they're excited about. <clears throat> You can see here on the screen, we've got uh, Bloomsbury, FactSight, Sage, and Mango languages all represented in today's session. So I like to keep my introduction short. So I am actually going to turn things over to Melissa from Bloomsbury. Uh, Melissa, I'm going to end sharing my screen so that you can start sharing yours. And then it's all over to you. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Right. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you all so much for including us in Taco Tuesday. It's our, I believe, our first Taco Tuesday, or at least mine. And we're really excited to be here. Um, my name is Melissa Maza, and I'm a senior account manager at Bloomsbury Digital Resources. And I actually handle Wisconsin as part of my territory, but I newly took over working with Wills directly. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to meet you all. And I thought I would just give a quick overview of what we have to offer at BDR uh, since our, it's our first time here. So at a quick glance, we have four basic areas where we have offerings for libraries. We have our eBooks and collections. Our most popular probably platform is our Drama Online resource. We have our Fashion Central hub, and then we also have the rest of our digital resources, which we like to think of as our subject-oriented hubs. One-stop shops cover specific topics in a variety of areas. So first, just to talk about Bloomsbury Collections, we offer these at the collection level by subject and year. We have individual titles, and we also do offer evidence-based acquisition purchasing. It's fully customizable. And we do offer our eBooks through Golby, Oasis, and Rialto. Rialto. So hopefully that uh, can streamline some of the purchasing for your library. We do have over 11,000 titles uh, across humanities and social sciences this out of the way um and visual arts as well as law there's a variety of inference included like heart tnc clark ib taurus and all of our ebooks are drm free with unlimited user concurrency with chapter level downloading and print functionality and in september we just recently decided to add about 400 supplemental textbooks that are available on the title by title basis uh, so these minor textbooks can now be used in the classroom freely through the library um, on a limited basis next we have as I mentioned, Drama Online, one of our most popular resources, and this is a resource that we offer at the collection level, so you can pick and choose which collections best suit your institution's needs, and they're available via subscription or perpetual access. Just to show the list of collections we currently have available, I won't go through all of them here, but we do have different content types that they're grouped into. We have play text, scholarly works, audio plays, uh, we have a variety of video play collections, and then we do have a master class in Shakespeare. Some of the newer collections that went live recently was uh, the National Theatre Collection 2, which will have a total of 20 new video performances, and the Stratford Festival Shakespeare Collection. And then coming in 2022, we have a theatre communications group play text collection that we're pretty excited about. We did recently redesign our drama online resource, uh, hopefully a little easier to navigate, a little more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so it houses the 23 collections we have to offer, as well as all the additional uh, resources we have to supplement the collections that we have. And I'll just quickly show you a couple of the tools that we have that make this such a useful resource for your patrons. So for each play text, there's a landing page that will have the metadata and different information and abstract or an overview about the play. And then once you go into the play reader, all of the pagination when you highlight over the text will pop up and it will show you which page the uh, where your app matches in the print. So you can use that for re referring back and forth, for referring to a syllabus. Uh, you can jump through the different acts and scenes using the table of contents, searching by page number, or you can even search within the play and footnotes pop up as you're reading. So you don't have to scroll through and try to go back and forth and find your place. 
We also do have our character grid and word and speech graph, which is useful for students who are uh, looking for performance to see if they can hold multiple characters, how much a character is talking within different accent scenes, the word count in different speeches. This can be useful for students who are looking to uh, audition or just compare how different characters are talking throughout. So it's just a great little way to see how the characters interact within a certain play. And then with our video content, all of our videos are closed captioned. And then we also have a scrolling transcript that auto scrolls as the play is running on your video. And you can search within the transcript as well. And you can also create clips, which is useful for presentations or showing bits and pieces in classroom so that you can show the parts you want to highlight to your students. And then all of the videos, plays, et cetera, have a bunch of different taxonomy terms that help narrow down searches and the like. And it's great because with Drama Online, we limit the search functionality to only show the results of collections that you own. So there's not a lot of confusion of what you can see and what you can't. So just to quickly look at the Fashion Central uh, offerings, we're also redesigning this resource, which will go live in December, and it houses five of our fashion resources. So the hub and our probably most popular fashion resources is the Berg Fashion Library from the renowned Berg imprint, and it houses the Berg Encyclopedia of World Dress and Fashion as the core, and it's enhanced with eBooks, other reference works. There's I think over 10,000 images, museum directories, exhibition archives, and uh, timeline, world map, et cetera. So it's a great one-stop reference point for research across the history and the global scope of fashion. We also have the Fairchild Books Library, which houses over 170 fashion textbooks, many of which are supplemented by teaching resources, as well as resources for students that we call our studio resources. And they have flashcards, multiple choice quizzes and the like. And having these fashion textbooks available on an unlimited basis through the library has been really great. Uh, we've heard a lot of positive feedback offering textbooks in that way. The Bloomsbury Fashion Business Cases resource it has a variety of different business cases that can be used both in the business program, but also looking at the business of fashion, which issues the industry is facing. There's a variety of case types, lengths, uh, how complex they are, uh, real world versus made up cases. So it's a really great way to just look at that aspect of fashion industry. And then lastly, we have the, I like to think of them as sister resources, the fashion photography archive and the fashion video archive. And both of these are curated by Valerie Steele, who is the director of the museum at FIT. And it looks at the grand time of the fashion show between the late 70s and the early 2000s with uh, a ton of images that are digitized for the first time. Some of them are exclusive um, and they're all tagged with a bunch of metadata. So it's a really valuable resource, both for inspiration, for research and for just uh, looking at, you know, how materials drape across the body and things like that. So it's a great resource for students who are studying fashion as well as researchers. And then the last area, as I mentioned, this is a bit overwhelming. There's a lot of resources, but we have many different subject hubs across a variety of areas. So we have things from architecture to medieval studies to screen studies, and all of these individual resources have a variety of content types all in one place, which is why we like to think of them as our hub. Um, there's reference works, ebooks, images, timelines, et cetera. So all of these are a great resource into looking at these specific subject areas across the Bloomsbury publishing portfolio. I just wanted to take a minute to quickly highlight what went live in the last year. Some of these you may have heard about, or maybe you haven't heard about them quite yet. Uh, the first, we launched a music and sound hub. So our Bloomsbury popular music resource moved over to the new hub. And we launched a new collection that is in partnership with Taylor Francis called Sound Studies. And it's one of the only resources focused on this specific area of music studies. We launched Bloomsbury History Theory and Method, which is the first digital resource dedicated to the study of historiography, and we commissioned a lot of content from different scholars around the world. We launched our Bloomsbury Philosophy Library Hub, which our Encyclopedia of Philosophers now sits on, and we also added very specific smaller collections like the History of Modern Aesthetics. 
And then lastly, and the one that's been getting a lot of attention since it just went live, uh, we have two new collections that joined our Theology and Religion Online resource, the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary and Anchor Yale Bible Commentaries, a lot of which digitized for the first time. And they join um, our TNT Clark Theology Library and the Jesus Library, the Bloomsbury Religion in North America collection and our library of Catholic thought collection, all available individually. And the Jerome Biblical Commentary, the new one, is also part of the Library of Catholic Thought Collection. So it's very exciting for us. And then just to go over quickly, just the general features and benefits of all of our resources. As I mentioned several times, unlimited access, DRM free, subscription or perpetual access purchasing. We do offer our access usually via IP address, proxy, shibboleth. We can do username and password. Our statistics are counter five compliant. Um, we have an admin portal where you can pull these uh, statistics yourself or I can always pull them for you. We have trials if you'd like to take a look at any or all of our resources. We do have open URL linking, DOIs at the chapter level. Uh, we do have MARC and KBART records, institutional local display. We conform to all accessibility standards that uh, are current. And then we do have promotional materials. We know how important it is sometimes to bring these up to attention to your patrons. So uh, on each of our websites, we do have posters and flyers you can download. Uh, we can offer training and demos. Uh, we have some walkthrough videos coming. So it's a, there's a lot of ways that we can support you. And we can also um, add something. If you have a request, we can work with marketing to get that to you. And then the last thing I just wanted to say, we were so excited to be here. So we are offering an additional 5% off on all of our Bloomsbury digital resources when you request a quote through your wills representative. Just mention Taco Tuesday through February 15th and you can have that additional 5% off. Uh, and I just wanted to put my contact information on the screen. Please feel free to reach out to me or to Wills if you have any questions. And thank you so very much for including me in Taco Tuesday. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, what a great presentation and and like timing was impeccable. I could hear your little alarm uh, yeah. letting you know that you were right on time. That was perfect. Um, I am always excited to see just the breadth of resources available. Um, I have to say, I don't know if I've um, ever taken much of a dive, uh, kind of a deeper dive into like drama online. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't realize just how much cool stuff there is beyond just uh, seeing the text and, and that kind of grid of like which characters are sharing the stage or having the text uh, while you're actually watching a recording. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I could imagine, you know, um, we, we always talk about this sort of thing, but you can certainly envision like cross discipline use for a lot of these tools. You know, fashion resources are uh, great for a fashion department, but they can also be really useful like in your history department, right? You're looking at kind of clothing trends over time, that kind of thing, right? Definitely, yeah. That, many uh, many of our yeah. resources are multidisciplinary in that way. So they can go into history classes, cultural studies, law, et cetera. So it's really great. And they work across a multitude of courses. Well, that's really fantastic. Um, so thank you for joining us and thanks for offering a little extra uh, cherry on top uh, discount for those people who were able to come today. So we'll keep an eye out um, for uh, quote requests or trial requests and send them along to you. Thank you so much for organizing this. Oh, it's uh, certainly our pleasure. So what I will do now is, uh, how do I do this? Oh, I'm going to go back to uh, sharing my screen so that we have, um, again, a clean starting point for our next presenter, who I am excited to say is uh, Susan Gall joining us from FactSite. Uh, Susan, I'm going to, uh, oops, oh, now I've, Done it. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can start yours, and then uh, then it'll be all yours. Great. Can everybody hear me all right? And can you see my screen? Uh, we can hear you, and we can see you, but I don't see your screen yet. How Looks about now? Thing. There it is. Okay, cool. Wow, Melissa did such a great job on her timing. I'm going to try to do the same. It's really great to be with all of you today. This is our second Taco Tuesday, but this time today I'm going to be focusing on just one fact site database, although we are a collection of reference databases for students in K through college. So 
if you and and for public library patrons as well so we invite you to request a trial anytime you can request through wills or you can contact me i'm happy to set up a trial for you and we are offering extended trials right now so that you can have your patrons or students actually test drive Backsite for specific coursework or research projects so you can see whether it's meeting their needs. So Factsite, as I said, is a collection of databases. We have a history bundle that includes these six databases, US and World Biography, Shapers of Society, American History, Defining Moments in US History, Milestone Documents, and Countries and Cultures. The subject of our conversation today is milestone documents, which is this one. I'm clicking on that icon to show you um, the way it's organized. We partnered with the Schlager Group. Neil Schlager is a former Gale editor and has been producing milestone documents resources in print for quite a few years. And we um, have partnered with him to bring 1,700 primary sources from US and world history online for the first time fully searchable database with scholarly commentary and other features. So I'm just going to give you a quick tour here today, and I encourage you to ask questions in the chat if there's anything you'd like me to focus on or anything you'd like to know more about. So researchers can search this database using the alphabetical index for browsing, the popular topics in American history. So these are the different eras in American history. We've just added this particular special topic index, and we're going to be adding one for world history as well. And then in this index, you can take a look at primary sources. These parallel the Schlager Group's print products. So there was a US history to 1865, US history to 1865 to the present, et cetera. The different topics, world religions, paralleling the um, Schlager Group print products. Now let's dive into one of these sections and see how the documents are organized. Each one of these sections in the top section includes some overview essays about the particular era in history. So here we have um, deepening economic and social discord during the time period known as Manifest Destiny. What is Manifest Destiny? You can read this essay. Southern, Southern demands for the expansion of slavery and the compromise of 1850. Important topics that students and researchers will want to know more about as they're studying this in this particular time period in history. Then we follow with the primary source documents that are included here. So let's take a look at this first one. This is the act to establish Yellowstone National Park. For every document, there's a similar format. So at the top, who is the author? In this case, it's a congressional act. So the author is shown as US Congress. What's the date of the con of the particular document? There's scholarly commentary connected with this document. So who's the commentator? She's he or she's listed here. What index is in this database? Is this document included? So it's included in Manifest Destiny and also in the Reconstruction Era. Related documents include. Theodore Roosevelt's statements pertaining to conservation and Thomas Jefferson's message to Congress about Lewis and Clark and the Treaty of Fort Laramie. The editors have tagged those documents to be related to this one. And then these are the sections that accompany this particular document. Every document in the database, there are 1,700. Not every document includes all of these features. I'll show you another one in a minute that's just the document itself. But in the, in, for the most frequently researched or the most important documents, you'll see all these sections included. So the first section, clicking on this plus sign here, it expands. It gives an overview or puts the document in context for the researcher. Just a couple of paragraphs. Sometimes it's this um, overview is longer depending on the scholar who wrote it. Then we follow with the primary source document itself. It's presented in this easy to read text font. And every database, every fact site database has audio read along. So if the document is one that is in more difficult language, or if you have a researcher who just wants to have the article read along to him, you click on this arrow and the document will be read. 
and um, the, the style of the, of the audio read along is that the full sentence is highlighted. It doesn't play well through Zoom, so I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but take a preview. You're welcome to test it out. It highlights the full sentence, and then each individual word is highlighted as it's read. The reader, uh, the researcher can control the speed of the reading, you can slow it down, speed it up. And um, it's a really good support for students who need a little bit of, or researchers who need a little bit more help. The next section here puts the document in context. So why was Yellowstone National Park being created? What was going on in the country at the time? So here's an essay that gives a little bit of history. Who were the key players surrounding this particular document? Um, you can follow along the history of how the document developed. This section about the author, this is US Congress. And it, it, in this case, who wrote the bill is a subject of scholarly debate apparently, but you can read a little bit more about who was involved with writing the bill. And then we have the analysis of the bill. What were the sections? In, in the case of some documents, the document is analyzed section by section or almost line by line. Who was the audience for the document? If it's a speech, you might be reading about who the speech was given before. Um, if it's a letter, you'll know more about um, who the author was writing to. If it's an editorial, what part of the country was the editorial reaching, things like that. What was the impact of the act to establish Yellowstone? See, here's some information about that. And then here's a section that teachers and professors are really enjoying, and that is study questions, a glossary of terms, and suggestions for further study. So there are study questions suggested here, glossary of terms, and then suggestions for further study. We do have a guide to milestone documents that provides information on which documents have quizzes or um, test yourself study documents to go along with them. So that's helpful to teachers and professors who want to identify which documents have that sort of information. And then if you're working in a school district where your students are using Noodle tools, FactSite is fully integrated with Noodle tools. So clicking on the cited Noodle tools will import a citation directly into your student researchers Noodle tools subscription. That's a popular program used in high schools. And we do have an MLA 9 citation included in every single fact site document. So your researchers can find the citation already formatted for them according to MLA 9. So that's one example of a document. Um, I'm going to go back to the overview here. And you can see that each of these topics has each of these um, sections would be similarly organized. The Southern Demands for the Expansion of Slavery. This is an essay that at the top, we have an abstract of the article that says a little bit about what was going on in the South, and then an overview essay there. And then I want to show you an example of a document that does not have analysis, the very next one. Ephraim Kirby Smith, who was writing letters from the front in the Mexican War. In this case, we have all the um, information in the header, but the primary source document is the only thing that's included, just the letters themselves. And you can see they go from April 9th, 1846 through to, oh, that's my five minute warning through to, um, what's the date here, September 7th. And at the end of this section, the writer says, I'm thankful that you do not know the peril we are in, good night. And the editor's note, the writer fell mortally wounded the next morning. So this was these were the final words he penned before finishing, um, before the end of his life. So there are some interesting things to dip into among the 1700 documents. And your students and researchers are um sure to find something interesting to read when they dip into this database i want to take a minute to um tell you about our uh, our history bundle 
when you bundle the databases together, there's about a 35% savings. We do have discount pricing through Wills for all of our subscriptions. And FactSafe subscriptions are very affordable. We have integration with most of the learning management systems um, that are being used, Canvas, ClassLink, Brightspace, Schoology. And you're welcome to take a trial for an individual database or a bundle of data databases anytime. We have um, audio read-along. If your professors or teachers are using Google Classroom, we have links to add to add articles to Google, Google Classroom. And FactSite links are persistent. So if you if a professor were to choose a specific link for an article, let's say Henry Clay's remarks, if you were to copy this link and use it in a lesson plan or an assignment, the link is persistent. It will always take the student or the researcher directly to this particular article. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? Does anybody have any questions about um, our FactSite databases? Encouraging you to take a trial anytime, have your students come back and explore, your researchers come back and explore. We offer authentication in almost any method you can imagine. IP authentication, easy proxy, open Athens, um, dedicated URL. We haven't found an authentication system that we haven't been able to accommodate. So we would welcome the opportunity to work with you and to authenticate through your system. I put my contact information in the chat. We're also, we also have information available through Wills and we would look forward to hearing from any of you. Our databases are quite affordable and um, we look forward to hearing from you after this webinar. Thank you. And thanks, Jeff, for putting everything together. Thank you, Susan, for joining us today. Um, I, I can say that I have, um, I think, that rarest of all middle school children, uh, the history nut. So I, I think that uh, these kinds of resources are exactly uh, what my student is looking for uh, from their uh, kind of school, uh, the products or the databases provided by their school library. So I know that uh, there are, uh, uh, it's, a, it's the kind of thing that can make um, these, topics uh, and resources uh, relevant and easy to understand for students who aren't uh, weird um, <laughs> history buffs like my own <laughs> who lives in my I, house. <laughs> I did forget to mention one search mechanism, Jeff, when you said that about searching about students who are crazy history buffs. When you when your subscription includes more than one fact site database, you can search here for the particular topic you're looking for and it will search across all of our databases and you often get more than one really excellent and deep resource to explore so we have something for every reading level and every interest level so thanks for um, giving me the chance to talk about FactSite today thanks for joining us susan um great so yeah i will echo what susan said if you have questions or uh want to learn more um you can oh yeah so you can see uh uh, that Susan has put some contact information in chat, but you can also, of course, always reach out to us um, here uh, at Wills. So I am going to take us back again to our little landing page so that I can tee things up for our next presenter. So uh, joining us today from SAGE uh, is Anne Fulton. Um, Anne, I will uh, end my share again so that you can take the reins. Great. Um, hello, everyone. Um, bear with me for one moment while I share my screen here. As Jeff said, I am Anne Fulton from SAGE. And today I'm going to be talking to you about some SAGE resources that you currently have an offer uh, with Wills about, as well as telling you about my group. So I am the manager of faculty outreach in the library relations and faculty outreach team. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about the resources and a little bit about my team. And there will of course be time for questions at the end. So first I wanna start with the Wills offer. 
So Wills has partnered with Sage for special pricing this fall on select Sage resources. And this offer is good through November 30th. So this offer includes Sage research methods, Sage journal back files, Sage knowledge, eBooks and e-reference, and CQ Press archives, including CQ Researcher and CQ Magazine purchases. Today, I, because I know we are short on time, I am going to talk about two of those key resources and how they contribute to the efficiency and quality scholarship needed by Will's libraries, researchers, faculty, and students. So first, I want to talk about Sage Knowledge, which is both a platform and a product. So when we talk about Sage Knowledge as the platform, we're talking about the website that houses um, Sage Business Cases, Sage Video, the newest resource Sage Skills Business. But we're also talking about the over 5,500 book and reference titles that make up what we call the ultimate social science digital library. So these are handbooks, encyclopedias, professional development titles, and just so many resources on this easy to use platform. So if you've not seen the platform since the recent redesign, you'll see that we have integrated features really developed in partnership with our users. So faculty, librarians, students. But some of the titles I'm most excited to tell you about are some that just published recently. The Sage Encyclopedia of Trans Studies, the Sage Handbook of Cultural Anthropology, which I actually just used to talk about medical anthropology the other day, uh, and Issues in Global Business. But we also have award-winning titles that have been previously published, like the Sage Encyclopedia of Psychology and Gender, the Sage Encyclopedia of Industrial and Organizational Psychology, and the Sage Encyclopedia of War, Social Sciences. What I really wanna highlight for you is that as an academic publisher with over 50 years of publishing, we have a wide range of resources across the disciplines. So you'll see here there is business and management content, health and social care. I mentioned politics and international relations. We also have psychology, sociology, criminology. There is so much resource here for your students and researchers. So I also wanna highlight that because this is a library investment, all of this is available to students at no additional cost. So the other resource I wanna to talk to you about today is Sage Research Methods. And I'm gonna maybe refer to it by its nickname SRM because Sage Research Methods is a bit of a mouthful. But what it is, is it's what we call the essential online resource for any researcher. So researchers who are conducting their first study or they're conducting their hundredth. Um, experienced researchers will love that they can find the little green books and the little blue books here to work through the variety of methods that they have come to know and love in those books. Uh, faculty will find the real world case studies of real research where we take students and researchers behind the journal curtain and really show them the realities of doing research. Also teaching data sets that have data sets and guides for step-by-step -step data analysis, whether you're doing quantitative or qualitative research. And when we're talking about students, I have to mention the video collections that we have that students love, the many, many, many hours, hundreds of videos about practical research skills, about data analysis, about market research. Uh, the videos really harness for students the power and the purpose that can be behind research. So I also wanna point out the tools that are available in here. Um, for example, the project planner. This is my favorite tool in Sage Research Methods because I think it really shows the depth and breadth of the content, but also Sage's commitment that re Sage Research Methods support researchers through every step of the research process. So as I said, those new researchers who are doing their lit review for the first time are gonna come in here. They're gonna find answers to their most common questions about reviewing literature. If they're uh, complicated, doing a complicated set of data collection or data analysis, they can come in here and find even more support, including checklists, so that they can check and make sure that they're in the right place with their research. So on both platforms, you will find that we are optimized for an easy to use experience for students. So you'll see here that there are unlimited simultaneous users, 
we do have a mobile responsive design, which means these look great on iPads and phones. We have uh, profiles which allow list creation and sharing. So if you wanna create a list about lit review resources, or you have a nursing 101 and a nursing 102, you can have multiple lists so that you can meet the needs of different classes, different kinds of students that come in. We have unlimited chapter downloads with no digital rights management. We also offer alumni access. So we mentioned, I definitely wanna mention the easy citation tools that we have, as well as the ability to embed and get DOIs for any of the content. From the librarian perspective, we also have MARC records, uh, training videos, handouts, and posters to promote our resources. And I'm gonna scroll a little bit quickly to get to the bottom here. So you can see that at the bottom of every page, we have these resources for authors, researchers, instructors, librarians. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation for a minute because when I'm speaking about support, I wanna be talking about the library relations and faculty outreach team. So really unique to SAGE is our commitment to the continued success of our users, whether they be librarians, students, or faculty and researchers. So our library relations and faculty outreach team works directly with your library sales managers to support you in accessing and using SAGE resources. So we provide customized instruction, training, outreach to any end user, librarians, faculty, students, anyone who wants to understand how best to leverage SAGE content, we are there to support you. So the library relations team is made up of librarians dedicated to using their knowledge of SAGE and librarianship to really partner with you for that long-term success of your resources. Faculty Outreach is a team of four, myself and three colleagues. Our field editors have a wide background in both teaching and editorial content creation. And we really strive to blend that knowledge of pedagogy with that editorial experience so that we can help librarians in reaching their faculty. We can also help faculty see how SAGE resources can support student success. And we do that whether they're teaching online or in person. So a couple of key details, how can we help? So if you are looking for ready-made materials for faculty and librarians, we have those in the form of libguides, how-to videos on key features, as well as train the trainer resources. So we have tip sheets, we have PowerPoint presentations that you can use and customize to really help librarians become the experts in these resources so you can talk directly to your faculty or students about them. But we also have practical personal support for all of our users. So in an onboarding situation, we would offer training to drive usage and increase awareness throughout the implementation. Our faculty training, if you chose to select any of them, would focus on pedagogy and content of the specific discipline. So we would also be able to offer student and researcher sessions to raise awareness and boost engagement. We also offer curriculum alignments, which are documents that demonstrate how SAGE resources align with either a specific course or a program or an initiative on campus. These have proven really engaging with faculty, the ability to kind of say, yes, we've looked at what you teach and here's how we can help you and here's how we can support you. So we're really here at SAGE to build that relationship with you. So we're committed throughout the onboarding and implementation process for your success. But I wanna mention that we also offer refresher training to help you stay current on any content or platform enhancements. So throughout the life of your investment, we're really here to make sure that we're as invested as your success as you are invested with us. And I do wanna kind of put a plug in here that I'm talking about this in relation to the Wills offer, but this team exists uh, outside of any uh, offer specific to right now with Wills by November 30th. So if you are using Sage right now and you wanna engage our team, please do so. We're very interested in figuring out a way to collaborate with you on any SAGE resources that you currently um, use or that you're interested in. So I also wanna mention that should you choose to do any 30-day trials, which we do offer for all our resources, if you choose to do any 30-day trials, you can contact the Library Relations and Faculty Outreach Team and we would be delighted to offer you trial training so that you can get a sense 
before you make an investment of what the resource really is. And we also offer that same training and outreach to faculty if you are looking to get faculty feedback on a resource before investing in it. So never knew my love of the Micro Machines Man commercials would come in so handy. I know I went through that lightning quick, um, but I wanna answer, kind of preemptively answer maybe some questions and just say, how do you get this support? If you're excited about what you're hearing and you wanna learn more, you can email Lee Soche or Gretel Webster. They are your library sales managers and they will give you any product information that you need. And you can also request the library relations and faculty outreach team support through them. So you can coordinate with them and get our team involved. Um, and then for any details on the Wills offer itself, of course, email Jeff uh, for any pricing and offer details. And then I wanted to leave a couple of minutes. You didn't hear my bell, but it did go off. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions that I can answer? And I've been keeping an eye on the chat. I haven't seen any questions come in yet, but uh, okay. we will kind of watch uh, or we'll, we'll kind of leave a, a moment here in case any do come in um, uh, now that uh, we've asked. <laughs> um, I will say that I, uh, much like I've said uh, previously here today, I'm, I'm always really blown away by the I don't even know the right word, ancillary, I guess, like the ancillary things that come along with a subscription to uh, some of these resources or purchase of some of these resources, the extra support, the train the trainer uh, resources, the promotional materials to make sure that uh, that library users are aware of these valuable uh, things that, that the library is buying on their behalf. So um, I, I would say Kudos to Sage as well for having such a, a thorough and really impressive uh, deep bench of extra stuff that comes along with a purchase, if that makes sense. Yes, and I absolutely believe that it's one of the, one of just Sage's most visible ways that we really show our commitment to library success is that we have invested in creating this team um, of eight people who are ready to get out and help you expand your reach, expand your impact, and really help you see the ROI that you need to see. So it's it's really exciting to work on this team. Um, I've been working with Sage for a little over six years, and I've been in higher education publishing since 2005, so coming up on year 16, and I've never worked with a company like Sage uh, in terms of the support and the commitment to, to user success. So. Thank you, I'm so glad that you see it too. Um, I'm delighted to be here. And of course, if anybody has any questions, I also put my contact information in chat. Um, I stole that idea from Susan. Susan, I loved your idea. So um, thank you for, for putting it out there. Um, but if anybody needs anything from Sage, please contact your library relations or your library sales manager. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Anne, for joining us. Great presentation and um, uh, uh, excellent timing. Um, it looks to me like our next presenter might be ready to go, but I'm going to share my screen really quick just to give us uh, a, uh, a clean uh, starting point for him. So uh, today's uh, fourth and, and final presenter for our November 2021 Taco Tuesday will be Brian, who's joining us from Mango Languages. Uh, Brian, I'm going to stop my screen share and turn things over to you. All right, thank you, Jeff, and thanks everyone for joining. And thank you to Wills for inviting everyone here today. This is our my first time doing Taco Tuesday, so I'm excited. And I know many of you have probably heard of Mango before, but I'd like to kind of give a quick overview as if you haven't, while trying to highlight some of the new things that we're doing for our library customers. So as you probably know, and maybe can glean from the name, Mango Languages is a language learning database, and we've worked with libraries since our inception, uh, since 2007. Um, and we've got library customers all over the country, so a good percentage of libraries nationally uh, do use Mango, but if you don't, we'd love to show you what we have to offer, and if you do already use Mango, I'd love to maybe point out some things that we've added 
or uh, made available to library customers over the past few years since maybe you last saw a presentation. So um, first and foremost, what I'm gonna be showing you and presenting today is going to be our web app. But something I always like to point out is that Mango does have incredible mobile apps for iOS and Android. And Mango, much like I think Susan said, uh, we haven't met an integration method through libraries that we don't like. So SIP2, proxy login, barcode matching, all of that stuff we can do for you. But once your patrons have access to Mango, through the library, they're able to download our mobile apps for uh, Apple devices on our iOS app or any Android device as well, and use the resource from home. And we know patrons across the country, a lot of uh, patrons depend on libraries for that internet access, but maybe don't have as strong of a connection at home our mobile apps can be used offline. So they can actually download lessons at the library to their phone or mobile device and take them at home and bring that language learning home. So I always like to point that out first and foremost when I'm uh, presenting Mango. Second, Mango now has more than 70 languages in which we teach. So uh, there's basically two buckets that I like to put it in, uh, put, put them into. Um, one would be world languages and the other English as a second language. So you may have pockets uh, of your population served that either speak English as a new language or could improve upon their English. And we offer that as well. But we have 72 world languages in which we teach anything from Arabic to Yiddish and many, many things in between uh, A to Y. We don't have any Z yet. Maybe, you know, we're always adding. So uh, potentially something in the future. But right now, A to Y, including those commonly taught languages that patrons are going to be looking for, like Spanish, French, Italian, German, Portuguese, Mandarin, Japanese, Korean, and then maybe some languages that you won't see through other platforms. You can see here, Swedish, Tamil, Tagalog. So um, lots, of, lots of options for your patrons to choose from. And you do, every library that subscribes to Mango uh, now gets a full language pack. And then I mentioned English as a new language. We do support uh, 20 mother tongues. So uh, for, for people of speakers of 20 different languages studying English, uh, we, we do have their mother language support. So English for Spanish speakers, English for Portuguese speakers, English for Japanese speakers, et cetera. So um, you'll see they do get some support in their native language while studying English. And then uh, very quickly, I'd love to just go into a lesson. So Mango's software, as I mentioned, teaches in these 73 different languages. We do have in our most built out languages like Spanish, we're going to have five units and those units are going to take your learners or your patrons from a uh, complete beginner. So they don't need any experience with the language to study with Mango through about an upper intermediate level, uh, upper intermediate, lower advanced. And if they do have some background in the language, we do have placement tests. So they can take a placement test and it will tell them where to begin within the lesson. Then every unit is broken up into chapters and every chapter is going to have a functional theme. So here you see salutations and small talk. Every chapter is going to begin and end with the exact same conversation in the target language. And in the middle, we break the language down piece by piece, build it back up so that by the time you'll see it first, a lot of it will be new. By the time you complete these lessons and see the, the conversation again, you should not only be able to use and understand everything you see, but also be able to use it and use some of the structures to build the language situationally. And we won't have uh, a ton of time to go through a full demo today. But I do want to show you what one of those conversations looks like. So if we look in Spanish in lesson one, oh, I'm at the beginning of the lesson when we start, you're going to start with conversational and grammar goals. And then the next slide we'll see is a full conversation. So I'll play that for you. By the end of this chapter, you'll be able to easily participate in a conversation like this. Hola, ¿cómo está usted? Buenos días. Estoy bien, gracias. ¿Y usted? Estoy bien también. Gracias. Qué día tan frío. Bueno, que tenga un buen día. Igualmente. Adiós. All right, so you see this would be a really functional conversation for someone if you were to be going to Mexico tomorrow or something like that. These are things that would come up in everyday conversation. We then break this down piece by piece using a few different tools that I'll show you very here's quickly. How, did you uh, notice that? Here's something to think about. How do you say, hello, good morning? 
then I would say, hola, como estas? Hola, buenos dias. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hola, buenos dias. Now, something that might stand out to you here is the color coding. So Mango does use semantic color mapping to show uh, the learners the word order and word grouping in their new language. A couple other things I can point out. There is the option to, as I hover over each word, you're going to see phonetic pop-ups in our native uh, phonetics. So you see hola, buenos, Dios in English phonetics as closely approximated as we can get. You can also see the full sentence transcribed. We can hear it again. Hola, buenos dias. We can also hear each word at an articulated speed. Hola, buenos dias. And lastly, a voice comparison feature where I'm able to compare my voice with the narrator. So I can listen. Hola, buenos dias. I can record myself here. Hola, buenos dias. My 20 years of learning Spanish is not bearing itself out great today, but let's listen. Hola, buenos dias. Oh, not too bad. Hola, buenos, buenos dias. dias. Hola, buenos dias. dias. And I would be able to go back and record myself as many times as I would like. There are other things involved here, like grammar and cultural notes that are going to touch on either uh, cultural nuances of the language that can help us speak it a little bit more naturally, or grammar points that are going to help us grasp uh, grasp the language as well. So I'm running a little short on time, so I'm going to jump out. I do want to show you Mango now offers something called Mango Movies in seven different languages, including Spanish, where we have full length feature films that were actually commercially released in the country where these languages are spoken. So these are Latin American films that you can see here, um, and we've turned them into language learning tools. So you would receive access to these with your uh, subscription to Mango as well. Um, and these are at no extra charge. And these are the full length feature films. We've broken them up scene by scene. And then we've taken every line of dialogue in the film and put it through our language learning methodology. Like you saw uh, much like the same conversation that we saw at the beginning of the Spanish lesson. We would take the conversations from the movie and put them through the similar pedagogy. So Mango Movies is relatively new, about five years old. And then we do have, X, uh, this is a separate program, but Little Pim for learners that are of zero to six years old. So uh, newborn through kindergarten, first grade, and just uh, some exposure programs in 10 different languages to help your younger patrons learn a language as well. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you, and I think Anne did a really good job of, of showing how Sage does this, and it's very important to Mango as well, is uh, making sure you are getting that ROI out of any subscription that you buy with Mango. And, and obviously what the way that's gonna bear out is through usage. So we do have a backend admin portal and I'm able to show you that a little more extensively if you uh, are interested and we can schedule a separate time to go through it. But you're gonna be able to see statistics of how many active registered users, total sessions, uh, and, and many other things that uh, we can focus on, as well as the most popular languages that are being used by your patrons. Um, and then outside of that, you will also be able to see the breakdown of what program they're using. If they took assessments, you might have seen the assessments that were there, uh, what score that they're getting, total learning time, obviously a really, really good, uh, good thing to focus on. But if we have problems with usage, we then have a website dedicated to resources for libraries to promote Mango. So we have library social communication. You can see here Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, etc. These are things that are ready made to plug into your library social media page and let patrons know that Mango is available to them. Um, you can see here, we do a lot with libraries around the Speak Like a Pirate Day. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that or if you do anything like that with your library, but we do have a mini course that we created specifically for promotion in Pirate. It's kind of silly. Uh, I encourage you to check that out, but there it is. Where am I? H-I-J-K, L-M-O-P, Pirate. Um, and you can see that we do, <laughs> it's just some silly stuff. Uh, Avasti mateys and things like that, but it's a great way to draw patrons eyes into the program if they're into the talk like a pirate thing and then hopefully they'll move on from that and study Spanish or Japanese or whatever they may uh, discover through that. Um, so beyond social communication, we have marketing materials like flyers and posters that you can put up in your library uh, in physical locations or you know you can use them as part of a web page zoom backgrounds you might see my 
Mango, there it is. Uh, Mango Zoom background here. We encourage our customers to use those as well. And we also have merchandise. So any library that subscribes with Mango gets a budget. So you will see a dollar amount attached here, but you wouldn't be paying us. It's part of your subscription um, where you can order things like pens, earbuds, socks. We even have masks now that you can order, uh, water bottles, et cetera, things that you can use to get your patrons enthusiastic about Mango. Um, and last thing I want to show is that we have an events calendar. So there are so many, so many different events throughout the year that we can use to highlight language learning um, in your library. So you can see here an events calendar of world holidays. We also have something called the 30 days of mango challenge where we encourage patrons to do a certain thing on each day, just as a little fun challenge to uh, to see if they can, they're up for it and to use the language. And, you know, maybe we give them a pen or a water bottle or something if they complete the whole 30 day challenge. So um, I think I am just at my time or uh, I'm happy to pause and take any questions that might have come up. I know it's a lot of information in 11 minutes. Oh, uh, excellent, excellent presentation, Brian. Um, we had a question that I think you uh, answered um, one of our attendees had asked if there is an admin module in order to be able to get a look at usage data and you did talk about that um, she followed up to ask if uh, would you be the uh, current contact if um, if they have questions and here's some contact information. yes <laughs> indeed I would be so that's um, me and I am the mango uh, representative for Wisconsin I'm in Chicago so I'm not too far away from you guys and I am the direct contact for Mango. You got my phone number and my email there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, that addresses the questions that have come in. I will. Uh, I'll say that um, I'm super impressed with the uh, the promotional stuff to get the word out to the uh, the patrons. I love the idea of making a big deal out of uh, Talk Like a Pirate Day just to get people looking at the language learning software uh, that's available and then, then then saying, oh gosh, I kind of always wanted to learn Korean and here I see that it's here. Uh, so that's that's very clever. I love that. Uh, and I would love to, nothing would make me happier than to see a bunch of library patrons um, wearing uh, mango face masks uh, that, that they got from their library as well. That's a cool idea too. Um, so thank you so much, Brian, for sharing all of that with us. I think the all of our resources today from all four of our presenters have been fantastic. I think these are top flight uh, library products that uh, uh, I'm super thrilled to be able to share with our members today. Uh, okay, well, if anyone has uh, any further questions, please feel free to throw them into the chat or the Q&A, but we uh, are coming to the end of our time today, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. Thanks again to um, uh, all of our presenters today, Anne, um, Susan, Melissa, and Brian for joining us uh, for Taco Tuesday. Uh, let me put my closing slide up. And uh, thank you to all of our attendees for registering and coming to today's session. Uh, for those of you who may be uh, watching um, the recording, thanks for checking that out as well. Keep your eyes peeled for more information about our next Taco Tuesday, which will be the last one of 2021, uh, happening on December 7th, again, as always, at 11.30 a.m. Uh, if you have questions about any of the resources you've seen here today, please feel free to reach out either to uh, the folks that presented or, or uh, to anyone on the Will staff. We'll be happy to get you answers, price quotes, trial information, or anything else we can do to help you uh, uh, learn more. And I guess that's it. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a great uh, afternoon, and we will see you next month.